This is the most important video I've ever made. And it begins with the realization that you were always meant to be poor. Now I'm not talking about poor by the standards of the great majority of human history. I'm not talking about the poverty of child soldiers in East Africa or starving North Koreans. No, you were meant to be poor in a very different way. You are the end result of decades of selfish and unwise decisions made by selfish and unwise leaders. You live a life of seeing YouTubers giving away millions to other millionaire YouTubers. You look at all these billionaires going into space wondering how is it possible? You spend spend every day struggling to pay the rent, the bills, the debt. Prices keep increasing, taxes keep hiking, while your income is stagnating and your time is wasting. Living in dystopian citadels with transient inhabitants squabbling cheek by cheek for space, where your only free time is spent being shuttled on a grindly slow, packed public transport through a dangerous urban sprawl, where you go home with just enough energy to mindlessly watch a drip drip of lethargic empty entertainment, where any moment without the next dopamine hit is a moment wasted where you wake up in a pod and go back to work for the bidding of your corporate slave master. Only for you to repeat the same cycle every day of every week of every month of every year. But it doesn't have to be this way. There is a formula, a mindset that will allow you to escape this trap. By the end of this video, you'll understand the subliminal mindsets and insidious indoctrination that has stunted your development. But the thing is, this won't be easy. In fact, this video will require your total engagement. It requires learning some ugly truths that our culture hasn't told you yet. I know many of you will click off because of this, but for those of you who know that this isn't the life you wanted, those of you who want to escape, those of you who no longer want to watch life in the stands, those of you who don't want to live through other people's stories, if this is you, then escaping this trap will change the trajectory of your life. At the end of this awaits a life that has been taken away from you. But if you're ready for this, then we need to start peeling back the layers. What are your true passions? What do you want to get out of life? What motivates you to get out of bed? These are the questions you were never asked in school. Instead, you spent most of your life sat behind a desk, learning to be mediocre, waiting for the next break, the next ring of the alarm to escape. The problem is that by living this lifestyle for most of your developing years, you were taught to never value your time. From the start of your life, your time was wasted at every second of the day. And with so much boring, mass-produced, phony education being droned at you all day, your only salvation was to waste even more more time at home, time that should be spent playing with other children, being embraced by your community and following your passion. But instead of this, you spent your entire days learning forgettable fragments of education. In fact, this time is so pointless that unschooled kids left alone with no education catch up completely with school children at college. I think the way we do schooling is much more about daycare and it's also preparing kids for the wrong things. I mean, eight hours a day, nine hours a day in a, in a little group prison camp where you're sort of, you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom and they tell you how to think and how to behave. I mean, that, that this is, it's terrible. By being accustomed to this life of never following your passions, this life of never valuing your time, this life of unfulfillment and conformity, your mind starts to become lazy. The ambition and drive to follow your curiosity has been crushed, so you become undisciplined. Why would you want to put yourself through the pain of constant work, practice and routine if there's no payoff at the end? What's the point of struggle without reward? By subconsciously adopting this mindset, you start to become devoid of passion and curiosity. Instead, you most likely turn to fake instant gratification passions. Passions like video games, Netflix, social media, and vaping. This is why we live in a generation where almost everyone needs some sort of life coach or therapist to tell them what to do. Because our education system has taken away the driving force that allows us to follow our destiny. We don't have that force, that burning desire to achieve our goals and become disciplined. So then you may be asking, how do you escape this mindset? What makes the elite so different? Well, truth is, the rulers of our society have always had a very different life than you. From birth, they resided on the other side of the city. They stand in the fast lane queues. They watch sports from the skyboard they eat different foods from you and they went to very different schools than you. They went to schools where they were actually given the time and attention to develop their innate special knowledge. They had the time and freedom to pursue their curiosity. They were trained to become disciplined. They were indoctrinated into knowing that they would be at the top. They don't even need to do that well in school. They don't need to learn boring subjects they don't care for. Instead, they learned to value their time and follow their passions. And from there, they were given very easy access into esteemed universities like Harvard and Yale. That's why almost all the elite children go to the best universities. Chuck Schumer sent both of his children to Harvard, Obama sent one of his children to Harvard, Hillary Clinton's daughter went to Stanford, and Al Gore sent four of his children to Harvard. 
But for normal people like you, you'd have to be the brightest and most talented in your school to apply. And even then, you'd only have a 3% chance of acceptance. And yet somehow almost all the leaders can send their children off to Harvard who show no sign of talent in anything. And so you see it's these differences in education that begin to shape the growing class divide that we see today. It's why our leaders can no longer even understand the lives of the majority. And in 2022, these differences are beginning to have catastrophic effects on all of our lives. It's in these next chapters that you'll soon understand why you were never supposed to be rich. So fast forward a few years and let's say you're a regular office worker. If you live in America, your average yearly wage is probably around $50,000 a year. You probably also work 40 hours a week and work 47 weeks a year. That means that you spend almost all your waking hours, all your most creative years, all your energy working to survive the next day. You have slowly become just another cog in the rat race. And by virtue of your schooling years and adopted mindsets, you were never meant to escape by design. As I mentioned earlier, you were taught to devalue your time. You were also taught that work is supposed to be boring and handed down to you by a teacher or boss. However, by being accustomed to this way of thinking, you're destined to be poor and miserable. Because in reality, the time you spend working has no real correlation to the money that you make. If you have a corner shop, for example, and you're sweating and tiring it out, restocking shelves, ordering deliveries, talking to customers, spending all hours of the day working, you're only achieving a fraction of what the other side are making. And the sad fact is that because you've never acquired the specific knowledge needed to provide value, you can be replaced by anyone. With this understanding that you can be replaced at any time, you continue to work day in and day out, neglecting your physical and mental health health and losing your only life on this earth. As much as people like Elon Musk like to claim that they work 100 hours a week, the truth is that almost no human on this planet can work more than 3 to 4 hours a day. And I'm not talking about shallow work where you procrastinate for almost the entire day. I'm talking about what Cal Newport describes as deep work, where you devote your pure, undivided attention to a certain task. Almost no wealthy, powerful person does any more real work than this. And yet you're slaving your precious time to make just enough to continue this dreary lifestyle. And this isn't a surprise since you've never been taught any other way of life. You've built up a lifelong habit of only working at 20% of your true capacity. You most likely waste six hours a day watching things that you don't care about, looking at posts that make you feel empty. If you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting thousands of dollars worth of your time. If you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. And you are doing that right now. So we've established the reasons why your life has been so restricted. But even still, why is this problem so much worse today? Why are we seeing the anti-work movements become so popular? I mean, the education system hasn't really changed in decades, and yet people are poorer than they were before. In all other years, people's wages grew relative to their country's economic growth. So why is this no longer the case? And even more importantly, why is our society now being throttled into such a downward spiral? Well, stick with me here, as things are about to get a lot more interesting interesting. So by this point, you should understand that through your adopted mindsets from school, you've been conditioned to live a miserable life, a life without freedom. Instead of inheriting your father's trades, using your specific knowledge and time, you now work for someone else, you rent from someone else, and you have nothing to show for it. You work for corporations that have amassed more power than countries, while you yourself have no power while your subconscious outrage and despair is buried under an avalanche of cultural drivel. Shelling out most of your income to live in a pod in a polluted megacity. Living in soul-destroying, alienating, unaffordable, decadent, deteriorating metropolises. But the question is, how did things get this bad? How did the average American wage stagnate, while the top 1% has accrued more wealth than at any other time in living memory? Well, at this point, it goes way beyond just education alone, because we have all been abandoned. Abandoned by leaders who abandoned the masses vital education and upbringing, abandoned by leaders through their reckless actions, through quantitative easing, money printing and inflation. Over 40% of all US dollars were printed in 2020, which is why you might start to notice that life has become a lot more expensive. I mean, the total money supply has increased by 336% in the last year and a half. This is money that is printed out of nothing. And this is new money that is dilating the value of every existing dollar you've earned. And the truth is, the situation is far worse than these numbers might suggest. In the last year, crude oil is up 55%. 
Used cars have gone up in price 32%. Beef prices have risen by 21%. Lumber up 35%, wheat 37%, sugar 33%, corn 39%, palm oil 43%, coffee 108%, Oats 114% and rent? Rent prices are up almost 23% in New York. Rent has almost tripled in California. In London, the mega rich Qataris own more property than the Queen of England. It's so bad that for property to be affordable in London, the average worker's wages would need to increase by 266% just to catch up with inflation. It's gotten so bad that there are literal poor doors, also that the rich no longer even have to look at the poor. That's why we're at a point where a literal cupboard under the stairs costs you almost $700 a month to live in. It's why shared pods with no privacy, no doors and no ownership will cost you $1,200 a month to live in. Depressing, crummy apartments that attract nothing more than crime and degeneracy are the new homes for the masses. With all this inflation, with all this wage stagnation, it's absolutely no coincidence that we see the rise in cryptocurrency and NFTs. People are gobbling up as much Bitcoin as possible as a final refuge against this unprecedented inflation. People are buying up as much magic internet money as possible because our currencies have become valueless. And this is a sign of impending disaster on a societal and personal level. With massive inflation, with no home ownership, no community, this is what keeps you oppressed. You can't rise up in a society when the rules of the game are no longer even. There is no such thing as a quality of opportunity when the game is rigged against you from the start. And none of this is an accident. Family is freedom. Property is freedom. Community is freedom. And at every second of the day, this is slowly being taken away from you. Our entire economy has become centered around a crony capitalist system that eviscerates the family, leading to misery, atomization, and existential despair. And don't just take my word for it. The Brookings Institute found that falling male wages led to a 20% reduction in marriage rates. When jobs shut down, marriage rates plummet. And at the same time, testosterone, sperm counts, and family are all crumbling into dust. Because by this point in our globalized, atomized, depressed, and lonely society, the elites no longer care for their population. They no longer care for the servant class. That's why wealth inequality is rampant. That's why we're seeing the end of the middle class. The backbone of democracy in Western civilization is being desecrated, which is why the majority of households now qualify as low income households. So the currency has been inflated to hide this deep rooted economic problem. And at the same time, everyone is atomized, depressed, and lonely. Because thanks to the complete failure of hypercapitalism to enrich our lives with any purpose or meaning, we have to cope with all of this by numbing ourselves on drugs, liquor, and turning to the road. But at least you can get the next Starbucks pumpkin latte, the next gadget, the next pill. At least you have the freedom to be a soulless shell of a human being. At least you have the freedom to slave away at a corporate job to make ends meet. At least you have the freedom to waste your life watching an endless loop of nihilistic, barren distractions. All of this is happening because America and the UK now live in a new class system. No one likes to mention it, the media ignores it, YouTubers run away from it, but it's the ugly truth. From the get-go, the rich have lived lives unfathomable to the majority. They have adopted esoteric mindsets that have allowed their curiosity and passions to thrive. They have been given the keys to the top universities that serve as a membership club into the elite. They have been given the resources, funds, discipline, and specific knowledge to generate wealth. And with this wealth, they have secured their freedom, they have secured their meaning and happiness. And most importantly, they have never lived in your shoes. They've never seen the life of the masses. They've never been through state education. They've never been to the factories, the average universities, the meaningless low-paying corporate jobs. They never lived in the pod and the dangerous urban sprawls that define modern cities. In any normal society, this would have forced change in the status quo. But in our society, political parties have now merged into one, all merging into the same carbon copy replica of one another. There is no longer any healthy political discourse. Lawmakers, journalists, and business CEOs are all in the same group. The elite's disconnection is then only further catalyzed by their isolation. The ruling class have become so insulated that their failures are just openly ignored. And it's no exaggeration when I say that this is how great civilizations collapse. Great civilizations collapse when the leaders work against the interests of the people. And you? 
you're on the losing side of all of this. From the beginning, you were never meant to be wealthy and fulfilled. The sad truth is that you're just another statistic in a corporate bureaucracy. A statistic with no money, no savings, and no family. But on a personal level, you can escape the situation. You don't have to live like this. This whole situation changes when we each take on personal responsibility to attend to ourselves and community. If you want the freedom to raise a family, the freedom to escape corporate hell and reinvigorate your psyche, you must begin to see work as play. You must decondition yourself from all these toxic mindsets sealed into you by state education. You need to build up the slow habits that will instill in you discipline. You need to cut out the sugar, cut out the lethargicness, the constant social media drivel and calm your mind. You need to reject the toxic junk that is continually stuffed into your psyche, constipating your creativity and potential. You need to play the game being played against you. Because when you embark on a path of freedom, you become dangerous. And when enough people begin to take control of their lives, this will foster radical improvement across all of society. It's just when you've been numbed into flaccid apathy on a collective level that society becomes so stagnant and unequal. The formula to reform, the formula to freedom, the formula to happiness boils down to this. Health plus wealth plus good relationships equals happiness. Focus on these three things. The things that have been destroyed in our society, destroyed by our leaders, destroyed by big tech. And I assure you, you will escape.